It's noon. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Um, welcome to the uh, April 18th, 2023 City of Cheyenne Public Services Committee meeting. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Laybourne real quick for uh, covering the meeting as chair two weeks ago while I was away. I appreciate him doing that. Um, anyway, uh, most of you, are, I think I see some new faces that, that I am not familiar with, but I, most of you have uh, attended our meetings in the past. So um, I just remind everybody, if you do have a phone device, anything like that, uh, please either turn it off or mute it uh, during the meeting if you're able to. Um, that also goes for the folks online. Uh, please uh, try to mute yourself if possible uh, when you're not speaking. I believe there is a sign up sheet by the door. Um, if you'd be uh, willing to uh, sign in to the meeting in case we need to follow up with you specifically, we know who we need to talk to. Um, last reminder is uh, when you come up to the, well, one of the last reminders, uh, when you come up to speak for public comment, go up to the podium there. Uh, turn on the uh, the speaker, our staff, if you're not familiar with our staff, will will show you what you need to do. Uh, identify who you are again for the record. Uh, these meetings are recorded. Um, and lastly, uh, any discussion uh, during public services committee uh, should be related to an item that is on the agenda for that meeting. Uh, with that, Madam Clerk, item number nine, please. Item number nine, ordinance second reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located west of Ridge Road between Jackson Street and Douglas Street. Staff, staff report. Chair and members of the committee, Aaron Fagan for the Planning and Development Office. This annexation was roughly 1.29 acres of land located at 5224 Ridge Road, which is west of Ridge Road between Jackson and Douglas Streets. It's 100% contiguous. There was a public hearing held per state statute on April 10th, and no public comment was heard at that time. A certified mailing was sent on March 13th to the landowners and utilities. There's an associated zone change, which is the next item on the agenda. And staff recommends approval, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you for that staff report. Uh, are there uh, any questions or comments from the committee for Ms. Fagan? Thank you. Uh, is there a developer's report? Or do we have a representative? There's not a representative. They've withdrawn from the application, so the city's moving the annexation and zone change forward. Oh, so thank you for the clarification. So we are technically the applicant then, the yes. city is. Okay, thank you. So there is not a developer's report because there is not a developer. Uh, thank you. I'm just I'm just used to used to saying that. Uh, any questions for staff uh, before I move on to further public comment, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Reddy, I apologize for being late and missing the first part of Aaron's presentation. But this is a privately owned piece of property. Is that it is? Correct? And how can if the applicant's withdrawn, how can the city be the one that's moving for the annexation and zone change the annexation was brought forward by the property owner um but they have withdrawn their application for the site that they were going to develop but an annexation can't be withdrawn per state statute so the city has taken over as the applicant okay thank you All right. Uh, any further public comment from here in the room, or uh, do we have any uh, hands raised, Madam Clerk? Okay. Uh, seeing and hearing uh, uh, no public comment, the chair would entertain a motion from the committee. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Laborn, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Uh, do we have any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Well, yeah, but if he doesn't say anything and I can't see past you, so I've got to 
I, I'm sorry, Pete. I, no, I did no, not I'm see just being ready. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, that's good. I saw, I saw it too, but he, he usually says something. All right. Anyway, seeing and hearing no further public comment uh, or comment from the committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation of uh, the Public Services Committee on this ordinance uh, on second reading will be for approval next Monday City Council meeting. Uh, item number 10, please. Number 10, ordinance second reading, amending the official zoning map of the City of Cheyenne, establishing the zoning classification of MR, medium density residential, for land being annexed to the City of Cheyenne located at 5224 Ridge Road, west of Ridge Road between Jackson Street and Douglas Street. Ms. Fagan, is there anything further you would like to add on this for a staff? Uh, chair, members of the committee, Aaron Fagan for the Planning and Development Office. Um, no, this is just a zone change that goes with the previous annexation. Um, the future land use was urban residential, which is consistent with MR zoning. So it's going from county MR to city MR zoning. And staff recommends approval. And Planning Commission also recommended approval on April 3rd. And I'm available for questions. Um, I'll go ahead and open up, open it up to questions from the committee, but the chair does have a few uh, questions. Um, but uh, I'll just ask the rest of the committee first if you have any questions for staff. Um, if the committee will allow, I, I do have a, a few a few questions, I guess, or, or maybe comments, but um, at the planning commission meeting, I'm just curious. Uh, the planning commission was uh, what roughly uh, two weeks ago. Um, had the applicant already withdrawn at that time? So was were they were they aware at that time that it, it was the city was going to have to take it through the the rest of the process? Chair, through you, yeah. Um, they the applicant withdraw that same day, and so we let the planning commission know that the applicant withdrew and that the city was taking it forward. Thank you. And then just one very quick follow-up. Um, my other question again was related to the uh, associated proposed zone of uh, uh, MR. Um, so I guess then what we're doing is, is this is gonna be used basically as a holding zone or Yes, currently there's a, an existing house on the property. It's not currently being used. It's vacant. Um, so that will be continued to be used as that until they sell the property. Okay, so it'll, they'll be able to continue with that use with, with this zoning until they decide to do something else. Okay, thank you. Um, any further questions from the committee? Um, do we have any public comment uh, here in the room or online uh, through raised hands, Madam Clerk? Okay. I'm not seeing any public comment here in the room. Um, the chair would entertain a motion. Uh, moved by Mr. Laborn, seconded by Dr. Rennie. Uh, further uh, opportunity for questions or comments uh, from the committee. Seeing and hearing none, uh, seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation uh, for this ordinance on second reading next Monday night uh, will be for approval. Uh, item number 11, please. Number 11, ordinance second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from MR, medium density residential, to NR2, neighborhood residential, medium density, for land located on lots one and block, lots one and two, block one, twin 22 subdivision. Do we have a staff report? Uh, chair, through you, uh, before you is a zoning map amendment. From, Can you please identify oh, yourself? Lonnie sir. Olson, Planning and Development Office. Thank My you, apologies. Mr. Olson. No, th thank you. Uh, before you is a zoning map amendment from MR, medium density residential, to NR2, neighborhood residential medium density for lots one and two, block one, twin 22 subdivision. Uh, the surrounding properties are zoned MR and CB, and this would act as a buffer from the CB to the MR. And it's in a historic neighborhood, and this would allow for 
uh, lots that have rear facing garages and alley and that matches the neighborhood character more. And on April 3rd, the Planning Commission recommended approval and staff recommends approval. And I stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Olson. I appreciate that. Um, are there any questions or comments from staff, uh, from committee for staff? Thank you. Do we happen to have a developer's report on this one? It's not. All righty, there we go. Good afternoon, Brandon Swain, 2802 Dimming Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, the proposed zone change doesn't increase the density on the project at all. Use by right currently is a pair of twin homes um, that will share a common wall. The purpose for the zone change is to allow single family detached. Um, for whatever reason, the, the UDC requires the zone change to NR2 to allow these to be uh, two detached properties. Um, I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Swain. Appreciate you being here as always. And you got relatively lucky. You're you're pretty pretty uh, near the top of the agenda today, so you didn't have to sit too terribly long. I know you you've you've had to here recently, so we appreciate you being here. You bet. Uh, any questions from the committee for the developer, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Laborn, go ahead. So, uh, this isn't a lot split, right? This was already divided, correct? Uh, when I originally purchased the lot, I believe December 2020, it was one lot. Uh, the UDC has a path for what's called an administrative plat. I utilized that probably 18 months ago to split the lot, but you are correct. The concurrent application isn't proposing any further split. Uh, as it sits right now, they are two separate legal lots. And this is a vacant lot? It is a vacant lot, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, anything further uh, from the committee for the developer? Seeing and hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Kirk, uh, Clerk, do we have uh, any hands raised? We do not. Any, uh, any public comment, any further public comment uh, from here in the room? Seeing and hearing none, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Laybourne, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Uh, any further questions or comments from the committee on this uh, uh, proposed zone change? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation for this ordinance on second reading uh, next Monday will be for approval. Uh, last item, please. Number 19 resolution for naming the median, which contains the historic airport fountain located to the east of the intersection of Central Avenue and East 8th Avenue to be known as Airport Fountain Park. Mr. Olson, go ahead. Uh, Chair Lonnie Olson, Planning and Development Office. Uh, what you have before you is a consideration for naming the median, which contains the historic airport fountain. Uh, and this would be referred to air, as Airport Fountain Park. Uh, the site is a 0.07 acre parcel located the east of the intersection of Central Avenue and East 8th Avenue. Uh, the Cheyenne Historic Preservation Board had a landscape study done in 2009 as it was threatened to be demolished. And then after that, through the years, they completed a restoration, a complete restoration of the fountain in two phases for a complete cost of $132,684.08, or $132,684.08, which was completed in uh, 2022. Uh, the board received 307 signatures for this naming, and it's required to have 300. Uh, those were certified by the clerk. A formal presentation was given to the uh, Community Recreation and Events Department on, I believe, April 3rd, stating this, and uh, I stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Um, are there any questions from the committee for staff before I uh, open it up for public comment? Mr. Chair. Mr. Seagrave, go ahead. Yes, sir, through you. Could you define a park for me? I have multiple pages of definition. So in my mind, this does not qualify as a park. Uh, chair, through you to 
Councilman Seagrave, uh, this would be what is considered a pocket park. We have that in uh, Plan Cheyenne. It is found in section four, page four dash one, and the pocket park. It says our small neighborhood parks. Uh, this type is very common in Cheyenne. The city's pocket parks average around two acres in size, which makes them more of an amenity for the immediate neighborhoods than for the larger neighborhood. Pocket parks are similar to neighborhood parks, except for they only offer a few amenities due to their limited size. Amenities might include playgrounds, benches, picnic tables, et cetera. Well, pocket parks supplement the neighborhood park system and provide visual relief within the urban landscape for the homes within a fourth mile. They are not a substitute for adequately sized neighborhood parks. Since the parcels are small, they have limited use for larger neighborhood gatherings, youth sports, practices, self-directed activities, such as kite flying and other activities that require larger open areas. The proliferation of small parks is important Important to note because it's very expensive to maintain the small parcels on a per acre, acre basis. Lincoln Optimist, JC, and are all at example of pocket parks. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. What amenities besides the fountain will be included in your definition of this pocket park? Uh, chair, through you to Councilman Seagrave. At this time, it's currently just a fountain, but uh, the Historic Preservation Board recently was notified that uh, they are going to be a four, they are acquiring a fourth of the estate of Wanda Gwen Rice, who the, was a Cheyenne resident that recently passed away. And the board has expressed uh, interest in having signage interpreting the site and just to help memorialize the aviation history in Cheyenne. Mr. Chair, Go ahead. in your definition, didn't you say things such as benches, et cetera? Is there anything going to happen here on this 0.7 acres? besides the fountain and a sign? Uh, chair, through you to Councilman Seagrave, not, there hasn't been any discussion of that at the moment, but it definitely could be considered. Where would it go? There's no room. Chair, through you, that would take more of an analysis. To Mr. Chair, go ahead. How, would, how is the public to get to this park? I mean, it's a four lane road, well, two lanes each direction very busy intersection. How would you recreate on this 0.7 acres that is pretty well full of fountain? What would you do there and how would you get there? Uh, chair through you uh, that to Councilman Seagrave, that intersection was recently redone and that included a better crosswalk for pedestrians and that meeting currently acts as like a pedestrian safety island to help cross, but it is uh, recreating on it would be more of a stop and observe the fountain and read the sign than anything else. Mr. Chair, would you allow your kids to play in this park? Uh, chair, through you to Councilman Seagrave, uh, I would not imagine this park to be one where children play. I think that they would rather go to Lions Park, which is located a couple blocks away. And this would be more for the aviation or historian enthusiasts that visit Cheyenne. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Uh, further opportunities for public comment? If, if you'd like. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, yeah. Uh, my name is Don Harold. I'm a member of the uh, uh, Historic Preservation Board. Um, we appreciate your uh, review of this. Um, in the uh, process of, of uh, collecting signatures, um, I was surprised at the number of people uh, who had memories of the fountain growing up. Um, uh, we had a lot of people who... Uh, uh, had relatives or new people that worked on the construction um, and also uh, people that uh, admitted they would never put soap in the fountain. <laughs> but anyway, um, the uh, my point is that uh, uh, a lot of a lot of residents are familiar with that and appreciate it. And uh, um, that's that became another motivation for us for uh, preservation.
stand by in case there are any questions, just in case. I, I, I don't know if there will be, but um, any uh, questions or comments uh, from the committee? Just asking, because I see your, I see your, your microphone I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it. All right. Um, Dr. Rennie, did you have any questions? Mr. Or comments? Mr. Chairman, whether Go ahead. staff, whether staff or representative of the HP board wants to explain. I mean, we do have other triangles in town, I presume, and the city maintains those. One example is on Randall, where there's a statue of a Buffalo soldier. I don't see this as being, you know, any different from those pieces of property. Is there any, I mean, I, I assume we're going to have to maintain the fountain in the island, whether it's a park or not. Is there an advantage um, that the HP board saw when they drew up their petition to designate it as a park? And then from our staff, is there any advantage or disadvantage having it designated as a park? Mr. Sanchez is walking up and, and, and good because I have a question for him. So, um. so but <laughs> since the, Mr. Chairman, before you sit down, sir, the petition came from the Historic Preservation Board. My understanding is correct. Okay, so what was what was the Historic Preservation Board's thought when they wanted it designated as a park? Uh, we were originally advised that um, to have city maintenance, it would have to be designated as a park. We learned later that that, uh, that wasn't a requirement um, to have it maintained by the city. Uh, but we proceeded anyway with the, uh, the park naming petition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then for Mr. Sanchez, since he's right back there. Mr. Sanchez, if you'd like to, to make some comments, and then if, if the committee is okay with it after you're, you're finished with your questioning, I have a question for so, Mr. Sanchez. And, well. and my question is for, for our director of CRE is, the, the, I assume we're going to maintain this just like we would some of the triangles or as the one I alluded to that had statue of the Buffalo Soldier. Does in From your department standpoint, is there any difference to whether this is designated park or not? Mr. Chair, Jason Sanchez, Community Wrecking Events. Uh, I really don't have uh, an issue whether it's called a park or a triangle. Uh, the maintenance that we were asked to perform is to do uh, to mow trim, to maintain the irrigation system, and then we'll be firing up the pump for the fountain itself. I'm not sure what if if a tile broke or if it something happened to the fountain itself how we would go about making those repairs. It sounds like there was quite a bit of work in many years and $130,000 to do this renovation restoration. Um, and so I'm just not sure what that would entail until the time comes. Uh, we do maintain a lot of those uh, triangles, about 116 acres of those around town. Uh, they, we just transport trucks and trailers and equipment to those areas to maintain. My, my only, the only thing I'm not certain of is what maintenance will fall on us for the fountain itself. I hope that helps. That you were reading my mind. That was exactly the question I was going to ask is, you know, where does our, where does our uh, responsibility, you know, and um, uh, Mr. Sanchez, is that anything that, what do you need from us? I mean, how can we further clarify that? Or is there any more discussion be had on that or? As far as as far as your comments, as far as you know, maintenance of maintenance of the fountain specifically is what I'm concerned with. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I really don't have a good answer for you. I don't know what it will entail until the problem presents itself. It At that time, then we'll be able to come back and say, you know, if it's a it's a quick fix, a quick repair, and we're able to do that in house, we will. <clears throat> If it's more intense than that, then we'll have to come back to the governing body. If the cost exceeds what we have in our budget, then to have that discussion, I don't have a better answer at the moment. So your interpretation, though, is that we're taking it lock, stock, and barrel. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave. Can you tell me who owns the fountain now? Who is responsible for it? I'll 
take whoever can answer that. <clears throat> Chair, members of the committee, Charles Bloom playing the Velma director. Um, the park is actually located within the right of way of 8th Avenue. Uh, so that is a city asset. We had some discussions with the airport back in 2018 and 2019 regarding the status, and it is within the right of way. It is one that is within our purview. Um, they, the airport had maintained it at one time, but it was more of a handshake agreement back then at that time. Um, so since 19, we've been maintaining it. Planning and development staff has taken turns in draining the water when there's been water in it at the end of the season. And we work closely with compliance and also with CRE when it comes to uh, getting them fountain running during the during the early spring or late spring, early summer. Mr. Chair, <clears throat> go ahead. As the city currently owns it, why are we why are we switching it from one department to another? What's the benefit? There's no funds that are going with this for parks to maintain it. Um, parks is everything I know of. They are stretched beyond capacity at this point. Why are we, I'm going to use the word dump. Why are we dumping this on CRE? If you're able to respond or care to respond. Chair, if, if I may, um, through the committee to Council Member Seagrave, I, I wouldn't classify this as necessarily dumping this on CRE. Um, we have been working with them um, through a partnership right now for that maintenance for the lawn mowing, which does occur approximately, I think it's once every two weeks or so, roughly depending on how fast the, the grass is growing. Um, it's been a collaborative effort. One of the items that the Historic Preservation Board has talked about is establishing a maintenance uh, program with this uh, recent uh, gift they have had that could look at um, ensuring that that the fountain sees adequate maintenance over time. Uh, something we have done in the planning and development department is we have scheduled sprinkler um, blowouts if necessary. We've also been um, working on uh, providing um, any necessary maintenance that we may see that might get overlooked or might be uh, made at the request of the Historic Preservation Board. Um, I do think it is a collaborative effort between all of us, the departments to work together on it because there's many different um, aspects there. We have everything ranging from CRE to historic preservation to planning and development, but we also have uh, public works items like uh, painting and striping of the crosswalks nearby. Mr. Chairman, so to Mr. Bloom, then how, if it's been a collaborative effort, does this designation change that or will it continue to be a collaborative effort? <clears throat> a chair through to the committee and council member Rennie. Um, I do not expect the relationship to change at all. I believe really the purpose of this uh, through the historic preservation board right now is to give the place a name. So it's more than just a median. They want to recognize it for what it is and then use that as a catalyst to future improvements to recognize the aviation history that's here in Cheyenne. Thank you, Mr. Uh, any further questions or comments for Mr. Bloom? Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Um, I'll go ahead and give uh, uh, one more opportunity for uh, some public comment here in the room and online. Do we have any raised hands, Jennifer? Okay. Mr. White, come on up. White, uh, I'd like to speak to uh, the fact of Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Seagrave brought up, if I'm understanding right, there has to be some sort of in, you know, budget line, what department is being funded with to allow Jason or whoever to maintain this. And so the question I would have is there an actual part of the budget that's specifically going to maintain this fountain? And I support this because I'm not sure everybody knows the history of this. Uh, when the state was taking on the uh, capital project, Mr. Mike Dixon, who was a historical architect on the job, donated his time for the design of that. If the preservation, if I'm speaking 
that's not true, then I would somebody would correct me. But he donated his whole time while he was here to help the folks get that fountain back into a state that it once was before. So I'd like to recognize Mr. Dixon on behalf of that. But um, as far as the funding, I would think that some department has to have it in their budget to take care of it. Thank you. Duly noted. That is a that is a valid concern. Um, further public comment from. Go ahead, sir, if you'd like. Yes, again, Don Harold, um, Historic Preservation Board. The um, fountain was commissioned and built by the city in 1936. The uh, at the time, the uh, uh, airport was. Uh, probably the most important airport in the Rocky Mountain West. Um, it was a major hub for, for uh, airmail and also the, the original um, uh, public transportation. Um, being proud of this status, the, the city uh, decided to beautify the, the entrance, which was the, the original terminal still stands right there in front of the fountain. Um, but it, uh, uh, I always assumed it belonged to the airport, but uh, we did learn in, in uh, working on the project that uh, uh, it's always belonged to the city. It was, it was commissioned and built by the city. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sanchez, if you'd like. Just a point of clarification. So it's really hard to establish a budget for right. the maintenance because for many years it was maintained, like Charles said, with a handshake agreement with the airport. We, I think it only got turned on for a brief moment last year. So we don't know what it will right. cost you. As far as the lawn maintenance, the turf maintenance, we'll take that on through the yeah. CRE. And what I was saying about going back to the councils, if something happens that, you know, cost, right. you know, the, the cost exceeds what we are able to afford it through our budget, we'll come back to you with it. But we're, I'm not able to establish a maintenance budget for this yet right. because we haven't owned it or operated it for a number of years. But you can basically contemplate, um, you can basically contemplate, you know, the, the turf, the turf maintenance. I mean, for, for a parcel that size, I mean, right. Or absorb. You guys know how to do that. I mean, sure. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's, I think it's certainly understood that over the next few years, as you're maintaining it, you'll have a better idea as to, but I, I appreciate you clarifying that. Um, any further public comment, uh, whether in the room or online? Uh, okay. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by Mr. Laborn, do we have a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Dr. Rennie. Uh, questions, comments, uh, concerns from the committee? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Laborn. Well, this was uh, something that I sponsored at the request of uh, President Johnson, who is the council representative to the Historic Preservation Board. He had uh, other ideas about park naming, and so I was uh, honored to be able to bring this forward. It really is uh, something that, as a native and as an individual that's observed the situation there for many years, this is a really uh, big step up in accomplishment by that board. It is really... Uh, difficult, as you can imagine, to raise 132000 and some of it was grants. I know that uh, the sales of the Christmas ornaments contributed. There was a, a scrap drive that I contributed to. So it's really been the kind of community effort that we can really, really be proud of. And it is not easy to repair that terracotta and restore that very unique uh, decorative elements that are on that. I would want to point out, and it was uh, brought up briefly, that across the street there, across 8th Avenue, is the original terminal. 
which I believe is does have the proper historic designation. And so um, I would say this, um, I don't know if uh, the city, the, the city built the uh, existing now deteriorating uh, newer terminal. And I think that we need to take a look at its historic designation since it's passed uh, that 50 year period and is now uh, sitting there, in my opinion, uh, not contributing to the, to the quality of uh, Cheyenne's uh, appearance. But uh, that is something I think that I hope the board will take a look at and that we should really begin to analyze because uh, that's a very unique and wonderful building and it is part of obviously the uh, architect, uh, the uh, aviation history that was mentioned here. So um, I hope we can take a look at that. And I would further point out that this is another element uh, that I hope will be uh, used or observed by our guests because it is uh, the entryway to Lions Park, the Botanic Gardens, the Old West Museum, and that whole corridor is really something that um, is of historical interest as well as recreational and uh, other interests. So I'm I'm very proud of the board for their effort here. This is a uh, um, been a long time coming with a lot of work and it is i'm sure built to the standard that we won't be seeing it deteriorate anytime in the near future and is comparable to uh the buffalo soldier area which it does have a park name designation i'm trying to think of the individual it's named after he was a, a congressional medal of honor uh, winner and of course, I'm familiar with uh, the other triangular uh, areas on city streets that the, that the Parks Department maintains. So um, I'm, I'm believing that this is a very good thing and I certainly commend everyone involved and I'm looking forward to uh, Gwen Rice's uh, bequest. Uh, there was a, I, she was a librarian here for a long time and cared about our community. So the signage will be important and perhaps a bench would be appropriate, uh, obviously with the crosswalk and the signalized intersection, uh, it is safe to uh, walk across the street and take a closer look at it. So um, I hope we can continue with our efforts at recognizing and celebrating the uh, heritage that we have here in regard to aviation. Thank you. Now, Mr. Cook had to step out for a moment, so he turned the chair over to me. So thank you, Mr. Leiborn. Mr. Seagrave, any comments? Mr. Chair, I'm going to vote in opposition to this. First of all, I don't believe it qualifies as a park. I don't think it should have that designation. Um, I, I think it's going to be a financial drain upon our CRE department, uh, a, a department that does not have funds or time to take on this additional responsibility. Uh, as the director indicated, um, they have no idea what this will cost to run and maintain and to repair um, you know, a, a facility that's 80 plus years old. Um, I have no animus against the fountain. I like the fountain. I just don't think uh, putting it onto our rec department is the appropriate thing to do. So I will be a, a no vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seagrave. Okay, so obviously I perceive this is getting into a tie. The chairman has the ability to vote to create a tie or break a tie. Um, in view of the fact that Mr. Bloom has said that nothing's probably going to change, it's going to be a collaboration between CRE and his department over the years, and we've already been doing it. I don't see a problem with continuing, and I, you know, I think it's remarkable that we've raised one hundred thirty thousand dollars to bring it up to fix it and and have it functioning properly. So um, I will vote in favor of it. So 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Mr. Seagrave is no, and the recommendation for Monday night will be to, is it a resolution? To adopt. And Mr. Chairman, you get the chair back just in time to adjourn. Sorry about that. Excuse me for having to uh, leave the meeting. Um, no further business on the agenda today. Thank you all. This meeting is adjourned.